believe with all my heart and soul that there is going to be an arrest and there will be justice for my family. Crystal Marie Rogers was a 35-year-old mother of five when she was last seen on July 3rd, 2015. Two days later, on July 5th, Rogers' mother reported her missing. The same day she was reported missing, her red Chevy Impala was found abandoned on the Bluegrass Parkway with a flat tire and keys in the ignition and a diaper bag still in the car. Crystal's mother, Sherry Ballard, thinks that the car was staged. I think they placed my daughter's car on that BG. I have never, ever thought that my daughter was in that car. In the weeks after her disappearance, investigators focused on Roger's longtime boyfriend, Brooks Houck. According to police, he was the last person to see Rogers alive. So you go to bed, she stays up. What's, what's she doing? She's, she's just on her phone uh, playing, I don't know what game, but she normally plays a game. Right. Some kind. She's got several of them on there, but I don't know which one. Do you know what time she, uh, Eli came to bed or she put him into bed? I don't know. And so when you wake up, he's there, but Crystal's not. She's not. Multiple searches of Houck's home and family farm turned up no connection to her disappearance. But just a few months after Crystal vanished, the Nelson County Sheriff's Office named Houck the main suspect in the case. Houck denied any involvement for more than eight years until he was indicted and arrested by the FBI and Kentucky State Police. This came just weeks after Joseph Lawson was arrested for conspiracy to commit murder and tampering with evidence in the case. However, Sherry Ballard has never doubted Brooks Houck was connected to her daughter's disappearance. I believe 100% in my heart that Brooks Houck is responsible, and that's my opinion. Big day in court, Brooks Houck in court. They had a hearing, some people were remote, but the prosecutor, wow. The prosecutor revealing some information in court today no one was expecting. It's all related to the other murder, the murder of Crystal's dad, Tommy Ballard. Let's take a listen. I will tell you, Your Honor, we're investigating the murder of Tommy Ballard that could potentially be related to this case. The, we were waiting for testing to come back on the farm we believe was used to murder Tommy Ballard, a farm that we purchased from Nicholas Houck, who was using a fake name when he sold the rock. We know it's the same caliber. There's five criteria that the, they're looking at, and so far it's matched four of the five criteria. Wow, this is huge. Uh, let's bring in our think tank, Lori Murray, Kirk Nermy, Brian Silver, uh, still with us. Um, you know, logic tells you the two murders are connected, uh, Kirk, uh, but now they're saying that they were able to get their hands on what they believe was the murder weapon for Crystal's father purchased from Brooks Houck's brother, former police officer. Right. I mean, it's starting to tie the whole thing together. We don't have a lot of information as it relates to Crystal, but we see this gun that's involved. Could this gun be involved in the murder of Crystal as well? Is there evidence to support that? We don't know that yet, but we also know that Mr. Lawson, who was involved, you know, to, you know, gave some information that motivated this arrest after eight years. So something significant changed after that eight year period that made co prosecutors confident enough to feel to bring this indictment. And I think now we're starting to see that the evidence is pretty strong. The FBI is starting to put the pieces together after all this time. Yeah. Um Brian Silber, I look at this case and there were there was the interview that he did with investigators. And he was acting kind of strange, kind of like um, a reality show person who thinks that they can act. Uh, that's, that's the vibe. <laughs> that's just the vibe I got from him. Uh, but the fact, if they can tie the murder weapon that was used to kill her father to his brother, I mean, you're putting together a, a large uh, conspiracy here in, in, in what happened to Crystal and, and her dad and who's responsible here. 
Well, you know, th this is where the role of discovery for the defense uh, in any case uh, plays a major, major uh, component. Uh, because they need to see what the government has. You know, I'm hearing allegations in the courtroom, but I'm not seeing evidence yet. Uh, what is the connection? What were the four of the five criteria he was referencing? Uh, you know, are they strong? Are they weak? Are they credible? Uh, these are all things that the defense is going to have to look at. You know, we all want to see a bigger picture and big connections. Uh, it makes for an interesting case. Uh, but we got to be grounded in reality, and, and that's what discovery is for, and those grounds will be founded in evidence. Now, we spoke about Brooks Hauck was in court, and they're talking about his brother, Nicholas, the former police officer connected to this gun. Take a listen to what the, the prosecutor had to say about what the Hauck family members were doing when they were testifying in front of the grand jury. The defendant speaks in his motion about his loving support of his family. I completely agree. They've been supportive in this matter. The defendant's sister, Rhonda McElvoy Houck, brother, Nicholas Houck, mother, Rosemary Houck, brother-in-law, Alex McElvoy, and Rosemary Houck's live-in boyfriend, Larry Mott, all recorded secretly brought in recorders and recorded the grand jury. I've been practicing here, Your Honor, for 25 years in this state, and I have yet, ever, heard of anyone recording a grand jury. Laurie Murray, how about that? I mean, we dealt with the Murdochs down there, now we're dealing with the Hawks out in Kentucky. Like, they're recording the grand jury uh, proceedings, secretly. I think they're going to get joint cells. Maybe they can like have you know adjoining rooms like at the Motel Six. But yeah, you know, what baffles me is that this all comes out during a bond reduction motion hearing. This was an explosive hearing that nobody really expected. And I also read that the grandmother in this case pled the fifth when she testified in front of the grand jury. They all know something. And they're all protecting him, and it's baffling to me. And they try to get their story together, and these grand jury proceedings are always secret. You know that, I know that, every attorney knows that, and they knew that. That's why they recorded it, so that they could make sure their stories fit and matched and nobody gave up one or the other. They're all in on it, and they're all going to go to jail. Okay, and uh, do we have our guests joining us? In just a second, okay. Um, Kirk Nurmi, quickly uh, to you. Have you in your career ever heard of grand jury proceedings being secretly recorded? No, I was amazed. It's such a bombshell, and it's really demonstrative of guilt. You know, we're starting to tie up a story here of a family cover-up. Like you said, just like the Murdochs, just a different state, same kind of uh, family dynamic, if you will doing anything to protect their family. Okay, we've got a special guest joining us by phone tonight from Scripps News Lexington reporter Lee Searcy, who was in the courtroom for Brooks Hawks hearing today. Lee, uh, great to speak with you tonight. What can you tell us about that courtroom today and who was there? Well, uh, of course, Sherry Ballard, Crystal Rogers' mother was there. Her grandparents were there. Um, her sister and her uh, Crystal Rogers' daughter was there. And sitting on the opposite side of the courtroom, Brooks Houck's mother, Rosemary, who was there with a male friend. Uh, someone told me that may have been her boyfriend. But uh, the, the courtroom was packed on the Rogers' side of the courtroom. And we were anticipating this, expecting this to be just a, a typical arraignment. You wave arraignment and you enter a not guilty plea on your client's behalf. And then uh, we did know that there would be discussion about um, lowering the bond, but nobody anticipated what came out in court today. Unbelievable. Did you have an opportunity to speak to anyone there? I did. I, I spoke to uh, Till Ballard, Crystal's grandfather, and uh, they are, this is a happy time for them. Kind of mixed emotions, but they have waited for this day to see Brooks in court. And uh, they were they were very emotional, as you can imagine. And uh, I tried to talk to Rosemary Hauk on the way out after court, but she didn't have much to say. If you want to roll that footage, you can see what happened. Are your sons involved in the murder of Tommy Ballard or Crystal? 
Do you have anything at all to say? Are you sorry for anything? Unreal. So <laughs> now, uh, Lee, it seems like you've got allegations that the family's recording everything, that the murder of Tommy Ballard, uh, the, the weapon that was used, the firearm that was used, may be connected to Brooks' brother. I mean, it seems like the, the whole family uh, is, may end up uh, as part of this case. You know, I have heard for about eight years now, especially from those close to the Ballard family, the Rogers family, that, that they think this could be um, a so-called family affair. You know, they've searched the grandparents, the mother's farm. Uh, they've searched uh, Nick Houck, Brooks' brother's home. Uh, obviously, they've searched Brooks' house. And, um, you know, it, it's really looking like that could be a possibility. I mean, when they said that the brother of Brooks report, reportedly sold a gun used to kill Tommy Ballard, I mean, those of us, we, all the media, we were all sitting in the jury um, seat, jury section, and we all just kind of looked at each other and went, wow, did we just hear that correctly? And Nick House, by the way, he wasn't in court. But I hear that he has been going about his business, kind of going to town, running errands. and uh, But he, did not, he was not in court today. I looked for him. What a day in Kentucky. Lee Searcy, uh, Scripps, Snoogs, Lexington, uh, thank you so much for all that reporting. I'm sure we'll be speaking again because uh, this case has turned out to be something and, and what developments today. Thank you so much.